Hey gang, thank you for joining me again today. Um, I am doing it real quick. Forgot my clapper, 681. You know the routine. <laughs> um, hang on here, I keep pushing the wrong button while I'm talking to you guys. I'm trying to find my photos because I do have a picture of this, this scene on my phone. There we go, all right. Uh, Quite a few changes since since I left you last. Uh, just a lot more light down here. Quite a bit more color. Uh, I've straightened out the car. These two cars, anyway. And, and the one the, these two still need work, but I'm leaving them for a minute. As you can see from the title of this, I decided to bring you in specifically. I started touching on this in my last broadcast. This is a really important concept and perhaps one that's hard for students to get a hold of. I'm calling it leaving gaps between your brush strokes, letting the, letting the underpainting show through between, between your more opaque layers. All right, so this hopefully this is gonna be a short broadcast and I'm gonna zoom in on the face of this building right here that is supposed to be, I don't know if you can see it, it's, it's this building, the middle one in the, right there, very bright, uh, pale yellow. In fact, I want to change the color slightly while I'm on the subject. All right, and I'm going to zoom in. Hello, Alessio Peluso. Good to have you on board. Thank you. From Italy. I'm honored. Honored to have you on board. Right, let's start at the bottom of this. This building, it, it already has uh, many layers of, of rendering on it, all different kinds of layers. Uh, in uh, layers in the acrylic, layers in layers of pencil, which is very unconventional, of course, uh, and, and a couple layers of uh, at least three layers of oil. But I'm down to the point now where it, it's got to it's got to jump forward. I need a lot more energy right here and it needs to be a lot brighter. And I, it dawned on me this would be, uh, I started painting this over here and said, wait a minute, I should be showing people how to do this. So then I said, okay, I'll show you on this building. This is brushmanship, I would say brushmanship 101, but it's really not. It's really brushmanship 401 if you wanna use that that analogy. This is advanced brushmanship. Yes, it is oil. Thank you. It's acrylic. My painting is acrylic underneath and oil on top. So several layers, about six, seven, eight layers, mostly transparent acrylic. And then uh, at least two glazes, layers, glaze layers of oil. And I call this layer my final edit and the the paint is uh, fairly opaque and again I have a photograph here that is I'm trying to roughly approximate the appearance of this building I don't want to copy it exactly because that would require much to much too much, uh, you know, realism. I don't, I don't want that kind of realism, but I want to give a very realistic approach. But the main thing I want you to see is how I'm leaving all these gaps that, of course, suggests the, the windows that are on the side of this building. But more than that, it's allowing, like that, that little dot right there is red, reddish, bluish, reddish, greenish, greenish, blue, blue. So it's allowing, by, by not covering up 
by not plastering over the underpainting, I allow those colors to come through. I just mixed up slightly different color now, a little bit, a little bit greener yellow. And of course I'm getting closer to the edge of the painting now, so I'm going to get messier and messier, frankly, more and more abstract as I get toward the edge of the painting. Oh, I'm right the, at the moment, I'm doing all this with my left hand, and of course I'm right-handed, so I tend to be even more loose when I use my left hand. All right, now, let me point you to my palette for just a minute. This is the color that I started and I just, I'm going to mix some titanium white with that. So it's slightly lighter, slightly lighter shade than what I just was just using. And back to the painting. Oh, that's not light enough. Let me add, add more. It was too close to the same colors that I just put on there. So I just added more white and let's see if that's bright enough. Yeah, barely. Actually, I need more. Um, titanium white on my palette. And, whoops, and I am just about out of <laughs> titanium white. <laughs> Don't worry, I have enough to get me through the day. <laughs> All right. Once again, I'm, I'm thinking about what the side of this building actually does look like. And I'm trying to give hints of that without getting too fussy or fastidious. Alicio says, let me, sorry, let me, let me pull it up. Cardboard, drawing and cardboard modeling. Whoa, that sounds like fun. I would, I would enjoy that very much. I, I do enjoy 3D modeling. You, you perhaps have seen me more than once now um, jerk my hand off, off the painting, jerk, jerk the brush, drag the brush off the painting and making, uh, I see one, two, three, now four places where I've done that. That is simply trying to create uh, interesting marks. I'm going to... Uh, Mix this up with some palette knife. There we go. Now it's looking like that building. There we go. There we go. That looks, that's looking let me, I've accidentally gotten into another subject here, but let, so let me, let me talk about that. Uh, in, in my world, um, realism, so to speak, quote unquote, realism is achieved by coming up or inventing a system. A system is the important word a system whereby you can render a thing and it, it looks like it's realistic but you're actually not I don't know what to call it you're actually not drawing you're not doing um, you know by drawing I mean you're not holding the brush like this and going like this with a little or actually let me find a, a, a small brush like like this tiny little thing like that right that's, that's what I mean by drawing or rendering. Extremely 
detailed, controlled, accurate, fastidious work. That is not good painting. Good painting is where you in, invent some process or stumble on some process, as I did just here, where as soon as I began adding the, the palette knife, this, this building began to look like the photograph that I, I have here in front of me. But as you can see, I'm not achieving the realism. By, by doing a great deal of careful work. Instead, by doing very free-spirited, loose work that accidentally, quote unquote, that accidentally ends up looking like that building. Let me back you up a little bit so maybe you can see it in context. And let, me, let me turn you around so you can see it from the front, perhaps. Hang on, there you go, yeah. So I would, I would like to point out again that it is, it's the gaps between all these, those brush strokes I just made. It's the gaps between them that really make this um, building come alive. There we go. Now it's, yeah, things are really starting to come alive now. With this painting, more than most, I've been, I've been adding light, uh, nothing but light for the last hour, other than when I finished rendering these two cars, then I started working up in here. And um, just adding light, like to this building, this building, awesome. down here. Thank you. Do you uh, paint every day? I try to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to miss tomorrow. <laughs> uh, how do you uh, go about purchasing one of yours? You pay, make a bid on a clipboard, like right here. And no, nobody's even made a bid yet. <laughs> okay. How does the process work? Well, normally... I'll let you know when the auction should be over. I don't, I'm not comfortable doing that yet because you're the first bid. So right. probably tomorrow. I think I might be out here tomorrow. I'll be downtown on Fayetteville Street somewhere tomorrow morning. Yeah. And you normally do like the cityscape, right? I do. Really? I do. Okay. Fayetteville Street's my favorite. South Glenwood, second favorite. Because I like, I like to be where people are and I like, well, I like the architecture of Fayetteville yeah. Street more than anything else. And uh, if you want to, if you want to, you know, if you bid $500, if you bid under 500, you just played a game, and I welcome that. <laughs> don't, don't get me. I'm absolutely well, I serious. Honestly, I don't even know what, what are you targeting as far as what you want. 700, okay. 750. Um, now the, the but, I, but I'm absolutely serious. If you put 100 dollars down, that's fine with me, because then somebody comes along and says, "Well, at least somebody's put 100." Okay. Um, the last four paintings I've done have averaged just over 700. Okay. 850, 800. But I did one for 500 too. So there you go. Okay. Um, are they typically this size? No, uh, this or uh, I did, uh, the others were 30 by 40, so six inches and four yeah. inches. Yeah. This is 24 by 36. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. This, this I hate that. Cool. Here's, here's my problem. Like, I hate to bid because I also want to see what else you potentially have yeah, okay. as well. You know, you know, so put a low bid there. Okay. <laughs> put 200 bucks. Okay. I won't, I won't, you can't have it for $200. Okay. But that gives me your phone number. All right, that's fair. <laughs> it shows me you, you might be a player. All right. And, uh, and, and uh, if I don't sell this one today, which it doesn't look like I'm going to, yeah. um, I'll, bring you, I, I'll bring you back with me tomorrow. You know? How do I access, um, like, how, do you have, like, a, a site? Or do you have, like, a, a, I do. a um, gallery? No, I'm out of all galleries. That's why I can do this. Because okay. <laughs> um, I don't have, to, I'm not cheating at any gallery. Ah, uh, never mind. I used to have a, I used to have a, can you, can you read that? Yeah. Dan Nelson. Yeah. Okay, so you can find me. Okay. You, get, you find everything you need to know about me right there. All right. And I've got your phone number, you Matthew. You and uh, so if I come down tomorrow to do a new painting, I'll bring this one with me. 
right. And you can see tomorrow's develop over a couple of days. Yeah, that's fine. Make sense? That's fine, yeah. Before, You're a wise man. Like I said, before I commit to... That's, yeah, no, no, no. See, have you ever seen me before? It's this I first have, time? I saw you. I saw yeah, okay. you before, but I didn't actually see what you were yeah, you yeah. started. So. <laughs> good to meet you, Matthew. Good to meet you as Thank well. Thank you for man. doing that. Appreciate yeah, it. It looks good, too. Thank so. you. Thank you, Dan. I'll be in touch then. <laughs> so y'all just heard that that process yeah i appreciate people putting down a bid even if it's you know they're not going to get it for that much it just gets things rolling every every auctioneer knows knows that drill you got to get the thing going what was i saying so i've been doing a lot of you know what's crazy i have put more i have put more um light and the top of this tree I think three times and it still doesn't have enough it still isn't the effect that I want I want I want the sense that the the sun is just catching um, the top of this tree here you know so just stick there that's better just stick with it with it till it starts working. And having mixed up this nice, this pretty intense green, let, let's, let's add it in a few other places. Again, this was the scene that I, that met me more or less the scene that met me uh, last this past Friday morning when I showed up bright and early to start this painting. Tomorrow night is our monthly painters forum, and uh, so I I'm thinking about doing a broadcast. I've done that one time before, a long time ago. I'm thinking about bringing you guys with me and let you watch over my shoulder to see what we do. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I'll, I'm thinking about it. Um, whoops. <laughs> Picked up too much. Okay, so I've just mixed up a, kind of a muted mid-tone Green. Let me move you out of my way now. And, uh, oh good, that's just about perfect. It's just about exactly the color that's on there, just one tick lighter, lighter, brighter than, than what's there. In this, and, and again, if, if since I called this, this particular episode, I called it leaving gaps. That, see that right there? That's leaving gaps. Hey, David Mercer. <laughs> I might be scared of colors, David, but I'm getting over. I'm taking pills for it. <laughs> it is a small size. 24 by 36. I do 18 by 24 is what I normally say is my limit. Of course, I'm being silly. I can paint as small as anybody, but I don't, really don't enjoy it. And 24 by 36 is right at the lower end edge of what I enjoy as well. You know what? Um, I think, okay, so I still have a couple of cars here, though they're in the lower left that need to be properly rendered. Uh, I will get around to that, but I think I'm in the mood to do, so I'm changing subjects right here in the middle of a broadcast. Again, I, I called it broken color, and now, I, I mean, I called it, I'm sorry, I called it leaving gaps. Now I'm going to go to broken color, okay? So forgive me for jumping topics. Maybe I should stop this broadcast and start another one, but nah, I'm not going to do that.
All right, let's do some broken color in here. Um, no, let's not. First, <laughs> I'll let you watch me then, if I'm gonna do this. First, let's clean off my palette. I have almost no room left for mixing. So real quick, let's get rid of this stuff. And uh, all you regulars, you know what broken color is, but there might be a new person watching, so sorry. Real quick description. Broken color is where you put down a color different from what's there on the canvas, but it's the same value, the same lightness darkness. And uh, this creates a very fascinating, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, very fascinating <laughs> strobe effect. That's an exaggeration, but um, shimmer in, in your painting. There's actually a physiological reason for that, which I've given more than once. Don't want to do it right now, so we'll just leave that. Just trust me, it creates a shimmer because of how your brain works. But bear with me for just a minute while I clean that palette off, and then I need to put on a looks like a couple new colors. Oh yeah, um, uh, yellow ochre. All right, and the way I typically, and in a way this is kind of, I don't know what the, silly? <laughs> Almost silly, the way I do uh, broken color. Um, I like starting anywhere on the color wheel and then just arbitrarily going right around the color wheel any direction I want. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna start with one of my favorite broken color colors. <laughs> Did you, follow, did you follow that? I'm going to start with purple or violet, if you rather. Okay, and I have a fairly pale violet, light violet on my... So anywhere that there is not violet, violet but there is this... Value. I would call it a, on a scale of one to 10, if, or zero to 10, if zero is white and 10 is black, it's about a four. So a little bit on the light side, a little bit on the pale side. So right at the moment, you see me putting a lot of it up here in this green. Green foliage is a great place, by the way. I think always great, great place to play with broken color. It's in trees and bushes. Now, nothing says, <laughs> nothing stops me like I'm doing right now. What I'm doing right now is not broken color. I'm just painting with the color purple because it struck, it struck me as I was painting. I said, ooh, that would look great on that lamppost. So, okay, but that is, see, it's not, it doesn't match the value at all that's there. I'm, it's considerably lighter. So that's not broken color. That's just painting. Let's go back now to broken color. So I'm putting this purple color anywhere where there's sort of a pale, that's enough in the trees. On this windshield, there's a little bit of pale green. Oh, I love this, this green stuff I got back here, but I bet it would look good with just a touch of purple on it. Yep. Uh, sky. Sky is also a great place for playing with broken color. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it's actually slightly dark in the woods here, so it's borderline broken color, but it'll do. Ooh, that's nice. Little, little violet just almost scumbled across that, that building right there. Okay, in this building as well. Let's get some of these panes of glass, that purple. Here we go. Let's do some of these windows here. All right, <laughs> it's, 
maybe I had too much fun with purple. I'm still doing it, still doing it. Maybe I've had way too much fun, but doggone, that was fun. I don't think it was too much, honestly. All right, so I, I go on the color wheel, I'm in purple. I either go around one way toward red or blue. I'm gonna go blue. So I'm not cleaning my brushes. I just stuck my brush in my ultramarine and a little bit of uh, titanium white to lighten it up. Okay, so now I have kind of a periwinkle blue, which means sort of a purp slightly purplish blue. And again, it's about a number, it's about a number five on a, on a 10 scale, so right in the middle, mid-tone. So I'm looking now for things in the painting basically that are not blue, but are mid-tone. And it's crazy down here to be doing broken color on these cars before they're even rendered appropriately, but there you go. That's sometimes stuff happens. I, I'm sort of doing the, the broken color here out of order. Does that make sense? Oh, I can, I can do some blue on these flags. It's perfect color. So right now what I'm doing is not broken color. I'm just painting. All right, good enough. Done with that. Likewise, if I put some blue clothing on these two people, that's not broken color. Am, am I making sense? It's only broken color when I'm putting it on something that's not. Okay, like for instance, the brown face of this building is a nice, uh, nice mid-tone brown. So I've just scumbled a little bit of blue in there. Let's mix up a little bit paler blue and come back and hit just a few pots of this. Again, I'd call it a periwinkle blue, I think still slightly. Um, purple and that's too much of a good thing no problem there we go ooh that looked nice that was nice okay I'm going to continue around the color wheel so I just uh, jabbed my pencil my pencil my, <laughs> uh, my brush <laughs> into a pile of phthalo blue. So now the blue that's on my brushes is, is a much warmer greenish blue. I talked earlier today about warm and cool blues. And if you're confused about that, listen to this morning's broadcast. But here's the bottom line. Cool blues are purplish and warm blues are greenish. There is some confusion about that but there shouldn't be, <laughs> in my humble opinion, which may not be all that humble. Um, you know, that right there, that is beautiful. That, that little passage right there. Hello, Susan. Good to have you here again. I'm, I'm doing um, broken color a little bit prematurely. It's, it's like, technically not, not quite time for it yet, but I was just in the mood, so decided to just throw caution to the wind and do some broken color. So having lots of fun, that of course is the most important thing. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> well, not if you're trying to make a living as an artist anyway. If you're just having fun, then having fun is the most important thing. If you're like me, no, selling a painting. <laughs> I hate to tell you how mercenary it is. <laughs> What's your inspiration, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> My mortgage. And I, I did an episode on broken color just the other day. I don't know if you heard me or not, but a uh, real important clarification is, can you do broken color on top of your broken color? For instance, just a few minutes ago, you saw me put a bunch of purple here, there, and everywhere. Can I then come back later and put green or red or brown or orange on top of that purple? The answer is absolutely yes. 
So yes, can you do broken color on top of broken color? And the answer is yeah, certainly. Please do. <laughs> Please do. All right. I feel like that's probably enough blue. I better move on before I get carried away. So once again, I'm, I'm just going around the color wheel. I started with purple and then I did uh, a cool blue, like ultramarine-ish. And then I did a warm blue, phthalo-ish. So what's next? Right, green. So greenish something. And of course, I start with a, a bluish green because that's the way I'm going around the, around the wheel. Got it? It's pretty intense green. Wow. That is really, really dangerous. A little dot there. A little smudge there. So if I do green up here in the trees, that, it, that doesn't really read as broken color. Why? Because trees are green, right? So it, now if it was a fall tree and it was all full of, green, of yellow, orange, and brown, then yes, then green would be a broken color. But I'm putting some green up there anyway, simply because it's on my brushes and I'm seeing it would look good here and there and here and there. All right, up here I've got a bunch of purple in this building. And a little bit of green would just be sweet. It is indeed. Yes, that's nice. Yeah, man. And a little bit of green now on this brown building. And on top of the stuff that was just on purple a minute ago. Yep. Um, I don't know about you, but broken color <laughs> is still takes, for me, takes a little bit of courage. I'm doing it because I know it looks good, but it still makes me a little bit nervous. This is not my normal, this is me compensating for weakness, okay? This is not my normal voice, if you will, but I, w I would like it to be my normal voice. and. And uh, I've only been doing this in intentional broken color layer for, I don't know, six months or something like that. I don't remember. And, um, but I, I do have enough sense to look at a painting after, after I've done it and go, oh my goodness, that looks so much better than it did before I did that. So that's why I'm doing it, because my head knows it looks good, but it still is a little bit nerve wracking because I mean, it's just crazy, right? Why are you putting green on that lamppost? Why are you putting green on that tire and that tire? And the answer is because academically, I know it's gonna look good. By experience, I know it's gonna look good, but it's still kind of like crazy. It still takes some courage for me. Uh, I used to be much more that way in my, uh, my fuzz layer, which I think is even more radical than the broken color I think. All right I'm done with that color green. Let's continue around the color wheel so I'm gonna mix some yellow with that and um, out of liquid. I, I've showed you this enough times I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I have now a very intense, whoa, I don't know if I can do this or not. Let me show you. Can you see this? See that stuff right there? It's like electric green. Whoa. I do not know if I have the nerve. Wow. <laughs> no, I put it on. Oh, it's too dark. Good. I was worried about that. But but I'm not going to wipe it off. I'm just going to paint it off. Do you know what I mean? Smudge it. Ooh, now that looks kind of cool. I'm 
having a hard time matching the value. Um, Ah, oh, <laughs> hello, Lisa. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> I'm no, I'm broadcasting. Oh, sorry. but that's good. No, no, I, 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 they, they like to hear people come by, and I do too. Great to see you. Do you work in here? Yeah. Yeah. Still. Hardly ever here. Are you really? I had a class training. <laughs> Very cool. Unbelievable. Thank you. Yeah, a couple of people have told me that. In fact, one one fellow came down today. He went upstairs and took a picture of my painting. Oh, it's yeah. on the 21st floor. Yep, yep. Because I couldn't remember it, what was I, up there. I saw it from a distance. I said, I know who painted that one. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm, I've been not here for, for a while. You know, I used to be here a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then I've been so out, out of a habit. They did more square. They fixed that up. Yeah, and I haven't, I've driven around it, but I, I look forward to painting over there. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm back. I, I feel like I'm back where I belong. Good. Down here, you know? Good. Yeah. Lots of opportunity. You Thank you. Likewise. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. So we'll get back together. Yeah. That'd be great. I'd love to do that. Awesome. Thanks, Isa. I really believe that God has taken us down similar paths from theological things. From what I'm hearing, anyway. <laughs> good. But, uh, it's all good. Good. Let's get together for coffee. Do you have my number? I don't think I have a card on me. Can you remember? I'll write mine. Can you remember my name? This is a bookmark. As oh. as a reminder, as a reminder. Uh, no, you want, no. You want me to write my name? No, no. You just no. take that, and that's a reminder to call me, okay. or text me, and set up coffee. Okay. Get it? Got it. What's your number? Nine one nine. Six two three. Five two six two. Yeah, sometime when you're in town. Let's work something out. I'd love to do that. 6-2. Six, two. Six, two. Yeah, good. I'd love it. Let's do it. Please. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Isa. Great to see you. <laughs> good. Maybe another 40 minutes. Okay. Okay. I'll be out. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Hello, David. Oh, somebody's saying <laughs> a hot pink. <laughs> uh, you are a chicken of bright colors, David says, and he's exactly correct. He's exactly correct. Oh, Redina didn't fall off her roof. Good. And David says rightly that the street color is boring. I hate it when you say correct things, David. <laughs> I'm being facetious. But that was quite a while ago. Things are getting more interesting, aren't they? There, there are going to be um, some, you know, there's a pedestrian crossing right here with the, with the white lines. And, and I'm gonna do them real subtle, but I do think, I do think that that will help things. All right, I'm getting away from this electric green. I got a few touches in there. That was enough. Whew. That's scary stuff. All right, now, yes, and I have to do some pink at some point. I'm, I'm not there yet. I, right now I'm on yellow. Another color that I'm afraid of, intense, I, I mean, cold, cold yellow. Is a, I love warm yellow, but, uh, you know, cad yellow light, in my case, it's imitation cad yellow light. You maybe know that. But, uh, you know, Hansa yellow, lemon yellow, those, those cold, cold yellows. In fact, for many years, I, I, I didn't even put that on my, I didn't even put the, those colors on my palette because I, I don't like them. And I don't mean, I, and, okay, when I say I don't like them, that's con admitting, confessing a weakness. That's not like, you know, as soon as you realize, if you're an artist, as soon as you realize that there's some color you don't like, <laughs> you slap your forehead and go, 
dang, <laughs> that, that's immature. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because th there can't be, as an artist, you, it's, like I've said, it's like being a cook and saying, I don't really like salt. Well, well that's not, <laughs> this is not an option open to you. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing here yellow. It's a very, of course, a very light color, of course. That goes without saying, doesn't it? And that's just about enough. Um, all right, next, going around the color wheel, I'm back around to warm yellow or, or yellow orange. Okay, according to my theory, which I spoke on this morning somewhat, yellow orange is the warmest. The warmest of all colors is yellow orange. And uh, but if I want broken color, that means I've got to be putting this yellow orange on light stuff, places in the painting that's already quite pale. Yep, that was good, that was good Mark. Many times, and I feel like I'm still all sort of all thumbs, I'm so inept at this broken color thing. Um, I put a I, I, I go to put a mark down wondering how it's gonna look and if it looks good. I can't wait to mature in this in this respect in my painting so that I am more of a master. I really feel like I'm quite a hack at the broken color thing. Pretty new to it. I, I still think it's making my paintings better even if, even if I'm lousy at it, it's making my paintings better. So I'm gonna keep on doing it. But I don't feel like I'm very adept at it yet. Okay, but that, those little bits right there, quite pleasant. Next, now let's go full on orange. Like maybe since that was a yellow orange, let's go all around a red orange, kind of tangerine color. Right, I think that's enough orange. So you, you don't have to do broken color the way I do. I mean, I'm doing it sort of the way, <laughs> frankly, the way an obsessive compulsive person would do it. <laughs> I'm giving free ride, free reign to my obsessive compulsive tendencies. I just started at purple, went all the way around the color wheel. I'm now at red, so the next after this would be purple again. But now I have a very intense and sort of dark red on my brushes. And yes, can you do broken color on top of broken color? The answer is absolutely. I'd already put some blue and green there. Actually knowing that this, this canopy of this building over here, this awning is red. So in that case, I did the broken color underneath and the realistic color on top. All right, I learned a cool thing the other day, accidentally. And I'm sure this could be taken too far, but I learned that red branches in a, in a green tree, in a green foliage, looks really cool. Again, you could take everything, something like that, way too far, I'm sure. But I'm going to try to keep, <laughs> draw it back from too far and just uh, 
do that. Now these windows appear pretty dark and they don't have any color in them at the moment. So let's try some red in there. That's nice. Same thing down here. I put some blue and some green on these windows. Let's put red on top of the blue and green. Eh, I don't like two of those. So let's paint with a rag. Diminish that a little bit. some red lettering on this banner so I can cheat and do a little bit of red there. Okay now before I leave this I'm going to mix up another batch of purple and now I've got a dark deep purple red or maroon on my brushes and uh, I'm going to do a, a trick, if you will, that, that I think works very well. And that is um, almost anywhere, actually I want that to be a little bluer, almost anywhere that I have um, a dark, a dark value, dark, dark black, say, on this painting. Um, I can substitute with a dark, deep purple, and in this case, sort of a dirty purple, which makes it even more effective. And um, our brain still reads that mark as dark, as almost black. But in fact, now there's actually color, even more color. There already was color. I don't have any true black on this. Certainly, I'm sure you understand. I don't have any true black on this uh, painting at all. But even those areas that were quite dark, um, now, rendering them in purple is a great trick because purple, even if it's considerably lighter than, than what's there, the fact that it's purple, uh, the purple recedes from the viewer, if you will. Uh, and, so, and so your brain interprets it as, a dark, as, a, as darkness, even if it's not truly dark. Boy, that, I think, I'm afraid that was just clear as mud. Okay, you can use purple in place of black. How about that? That's what I'm saying. You can use purple instead of black, thereby infusing much, much color into your painting. And of course, I, I don't literally mean black. You understand that, right? You can use purple instead of dark is probably what I should say. Use purple in the place of dark and you get much more color in your painting um, and still your values still read right all right so I'm uh, now I think I'm done with the broken color and uh, I am going to continue painting but uh, I'm going to end this broadcast here and uh, some of the things I, I'll look at your chats in a minute I still have to render these cars carefully. I want them accurate, even if they're not tight. I don't want them tight, but I want them accurate. I hope that makes sense to you. And uh, in my book, it's it's never too late for a little for a little more pencil. <laughs> it's this this pencil thing has really grown on me in the last three or four years. When I first started, I didn't know if it was just a passing fancy. No, quite the contrary. It's it's turned into a a real feature. I, ju I just like it. I just like the scratchiness of it. Like the like the edginess of of, of a pencil mark next to uh, and of course like that. Some of those some of these pencil marks are purely uh, abstract. They're, they're not every not all the marks I'm making are to facilitate uh, the illusion of reality. Some of the marks are, in fact, the opposite of reality. All right, it's been fun having you. Let me, let me sit down here for a minute and uh, read your chat. 
you wild and crazy people. <laughs> Wow, lots of good comments. I'm going back 343. So 45 minutes ago, Alicio Peluso from Italy greets us. Good to have you on board, Alicio. <laughs> David, exhorting me <laughs> to use colors. Oh, and I, and I still haven't done these. Again, so the, can you see that? Yeah, these, these lines, these street crossings. I've, I've just got pencil scratched in there right now. Um, it'll be the same color as what's already here, more or less, and just slightly lighter. Once again, I did the broken color ahead of schedule on this painting. So now I'm actually going to go back into the painting and act, behave like, quote unquote, final edit layer. Oh, and let me make one more comment. Um, I have done this before and, and it's filed away in the back of my mind. If, if I ever do the broken color thing and come back the next day and say, dang, I think I overdid it, which I've worried about a couple times. Usually my, my critics say, no, 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 it's okay, but I still worry about it. Anyway, I can, if I do really feel like I've overdone it, it's an easy fix. Transparent glaze, you know, warm over the light areas, cool over the shade areas, and that glaze will unify my palette and take all the broken colors and just squeeze them down just a little bit. Does that make sense? And then of course, I can take a rag and lift out to pump them back up or I can go back in with light paint and so on. Uh, so that's a really good trick to keep in the back of your mind if you're ever doing this broken color thing. Monique, good to have you on board. Must be getting late there by now, I would think. And Radina did not fall off her roof. <laughs> Oh yeah, and, and uh, David says, I don't have any stripes down the middle of the road. Well, you know what, David? <laughs> it's because there aren't any. I'm looking. <laughs> Here, let me turn you around. Here's, here's what I'm looking at. <laughs> there's, there's the street. How about that? No stripes at all. Now that, by the way, good point. That doesn't mean I can't add them, right? And, and I've done that in the, fa in the past, in fact, just because it just adds a, an element to the composition, I, and I do kind of like the idea of a, a little bit of hint of a line down the middle. But anyway, that's why it's not there, because it's actually not actually there yet. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> going backwards in the, in the um, backwards in the. <laughs> Hot pink street, right, exactly. I am pink. Oh, and I haven't, I didn't, I missed pink. I'm sorry, I'll come back and do it later, I promise. When you aren't looking, I do solemnly swear. Whatever motions you make for solemnly swearing. <laughs> oh, no, Susan says, no people in this painting. <laughs> they need bumping up, don't worry. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people so far. Not that anybody could see those as people. I'm not blaming you one bit, but, but in, my, in fact, possibly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, possibly as many as 11. And yeah, they're all black and at this point. So good point though, because I do forget people. <laughs> Uncle 60 says, I want to be Uncle 32. Well, I'm Uncle 65 and a half, okay? So, I, I got you, you, you beat. <laughs> and Redina says, laugh out loud. Whenever someone says this, in my theory, I think of the Monty Python skit. <laughs> yes, I did start with my abstract strokes, David. Alas, I feel like I, I haven't mastered keeping them in these small paintings. Uh, the uh, last painting or two paintings ago, I did a, with the blue umbrellas, I feel like I did a really good job of keeping those. I don't know what happened here. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. Uncle Sixty said, I did broken color on my floor today when I dropped a jar full of red oil paint. 
<laughs> the street reminds you of <laughs> Ghostbusters. I love it. <laughs> or Godzilla. <laughs> or King Kong. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Um, are you serious? Um, did you really? Are you just kidding with us? Did you really drop paint on the floor? Wow. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Uncle Sixties, hey Dan, let your YouTube subscribers sign your card project. I can fit about 200 names. Are you serious? Oh my goodness. Okay, how do we do that? How do we do that, Horatio? Um, okay, you guys, I'll send me an email with your signature, your handwritten signature. Or a text. You got my phone number, right? You can get my phone number in my email. We're going to put it on the walking stick that Uncle Sixty is making for me. How's that for awesomeness? <laughs> no, he's making something that will make my head get smaller. <laughs> because he's saying, dang, you are so old, you need a cane just to get around. <laughs> so that's what he's saying. All right, you guys, this has been too much fun. As always, love your company. Um, um, tonight I'm booked for supper. Uh, tomorrow I, I might be back out tomorrow morning because tomorrow night I'm I'm booked. And you you might have heard me tell a young man just a little while ago that I hope to come out here tomorrow morning. So that might be our next broadcast. I might have overdid the broken color here. <laughs> Overdone. I might have overdone. Don't worry about it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.